talk first of all about uh, I know you've been a your current uh, co softball coach, and then I know you've coached some baseball for Shenandoah and done a lot of youth stuff as well. Can you talk about uh, all of the uh, all of the stuff you've been involved in coaching wise uh, here in your career, maybe even before Shenandoah, if there was a time before that? Well, uh, you know, when I first started, um, really, I started with a youth baseball team, uh, eleven and under. We did a uh, Brad Martin and I did a uh, Southwest Iowa Heat that we called ourselves, and uh, we played in the Omaha Leagues a little bit, uh, went to some tournaments. We were involved with the Continental Amateur Baseball Association here in Shenandoah, and uh, we kind of put together a select team from area kids. And I was thinking back about that this morning. That's been about 18, 20 years ago. So that's uh, that's kind of my first start in, in coaching. So uh, I guess who are some of the kids on those you know first teams? Um, Brandon Bray here from Shenandoah, Ryan Griebert, uh, Drew Williams, Jordan Jackson, uh, Jared Spangenberg, Blair Holman, a uh, familiar name around the area, uh, Colby Bissell from Corning, um, gosh, just a lot of, a lot of kids, a lot of kids, TJ Young, so, yeah. Yeah, a lot of those uh, names, I, I remember I played against Dennis and I played against a lot of those guys uh, from the area. Um, you tell me about uh, then making the transition. When did you, you know, take over Shenandoah head baseball coach? When, when was that? And then how, how long did you do that? Started that back in 2003. Um, uh, Mike Laughlin actually uh, asked me, he said, uh, would you be interested in the coaching job? He said, they're looking for one. And I said, I don't have my coaching certificate. And he said, well, go get it. So I did. And uh, applied for the job and took over in 2003, coached uh, from 2003 to 2008. And uh, in 2006, we were able to take a team to the state. Definitely. We'll get to that in a little bit, too. I, I want to just back up myself as well. What what, what kind of led you into getting into that, starting, starting that youth uh, baseball? I know you, you love baseball and you played baseball. So was that kind of what uh, got you into that? I would say those were the big drivers behind it. Um, there was an opportunity here, as I mentioned, Brad Martin. He used to run the jewelry store here in Shenandoah. Uh, he and I visited. Uh, uh, Donna Bray had a son that was that age, Brandon. Um, and so uh, we just kind of got together. Things started going. And uh, next thing you know, we're, we're coaching. Let's go back even further to your playing career. Tell me about uh, your high school career and then uh, where you went on from there. Well, I played uh, baseball in Newmarket, Iowa. That's where I was born and raised and graduated from uh, back in 1981. And then I went to Waldorf Junior College for two years, uh, played baseball up there, pitched. Um, and then uh, my junior year, I went to the University of Iowa and uh, was a walk-on. And I uh, got an opportunity to play under Coach uh, Dwayne Banks. And uh, my senior year, I decided it was time to do something that was going to be able to get me to, to graduate. So that's what I did. And uh, um, you know, just went from there. Tell me about playing at Newmarket. I assume that was part of the corner conference that time, right? So uh, tell me about playing uh, uh, playing at Newmarket and in the corner conference. And then uh, I think, you know, I've heard if, a little bit about uh, your coach was uh, kind of a, a big influence too. Oh, definitely. Uh, some good coaches through there. Uh, you know, in my youth, I started with Dave Sela, uh, who was a longtime teacher at, at Clarinda High School. Uh, he's retired now. Uh, Ron Jackson was my next coach um, in high school. Um, had him for two or three years. Uh, and of course, Ron's a great baseball player, a referee, does a lot of things, and still active today. Uh, and then Noel Bodansky was uh, my last two years uh, at Newmarket as, uh, as our coach. And those guys were impeccable. I mean, they both, both of those guys played for the Clarinda A's. Um, they had a lot of things they could bring to the table for us. You know, we're a small town. We didn't have a whole lot to uh, uh, be able to go out and get like kids do today as far as being able to play. And so they brought a lot to the table for us. What do you remember from uh, the old corner conference? I mean, were you guys pretty successful? Uh, we were at times. Uh, I know in basketball, when I played basketball my sophomore year, we were one of the better teams in southwest Iowa at that time. So I was, that was fortunate and fun to be on. Uh, my senior year, uh, we had good success, uh, had a chance to win the corner conference. Uh, I think we fell a little bit short, but uh, we played Stanton in a district baseball game. They were one of the top rated teams in the state at that time. We knocked them off and uh, um, we, we bowed out of the tournament, I think the next game or two after that. But a uh, um, lot of great stories to tell, obviously, and, and uh, as everybody does when they play in sports. But uh, yeah, a lot of good years. Actually, what years, what years were you in high school? Uh, 1977 to 1981.
Um, and so you go to Waldorf there, and then then on to Iowa. I get as a walk on. So can you take me through the, uh, you know the. The situation there in walking on to Iowa, and uh, you know, did you approach Dwayne Banks? Dwayne Banks approach you. How did that go? I think it was a little bit of mutual. Um, I talked with uh, my head baseball coach Mark Dykema at Waldorf Junior College and told him that I was interested in going to Iowa. And he, uh, you know, he made contact with a university and got a hold of Dwayne Banks, and uh, uh, we scheduled an interview. And I got a chance to go over and meet him and go through the college uh, system and. Um, you know, that fall was invited to, to try out as a walk-on and uh, spent, you know, a couple of weeks uh, going through the process, Actually, probably a two- or three-day process. But then uh, the waiting list, you know, you're looking at the waiting list to see who makes it and who doesn't. And uh, there was only a few of us that made it. I think there were three guys that were selected from the walk-on tryouts, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be one of those. So we're talking like 84 or so uh, anybody on that team that you know might uh, people might know um, I, I can't tell you that I, I there's nobody really that came out of there that made it to the majors Mike Darby was probably one of the top pitchers at the time uh, Jeff Gerchev was uh, uh, the main catcher playing at that time the, some of the aughts you know if you've heard the aught name obviously at the University of Iowa uh, Eddie Ott was playing uh, baseball at that time at you guys have uh, you had much success in the Big Ten at that point. I think we're we were 500 the year that I played. Um, you know, obviously could have been a little bit better, but uh, we had a, a pretty solid nucleus. Yeah, I was trying to think like 80s. It was Michi Michigan. I mean, they were good around that time, weren't they? Yeah, Michigan was very good. Northwestern was actually a pretty good baseball team during that time as well. Well, and then we move. Uh, what you know? What uh, from Iowa City? What brings you back to then this area? Would you go from Iowa City to Shenandoah? I uh, actually uh, came back to this area and uh, started working in Farmers Mutual Telephone Company in Stanton. Worked there for a couple of years, uh, met my wife. Uh, we moved to Northwest Iowa, lived there for two or three years, um, and then just decided we want to come back home and be closer to family. And uh, that's been a big part of everything that's, that we're all about. It's about family today. Seems like uh, every person I talked to on this feature has some was in Northwest Iowa for a little bit. Where, where were you? I uh, actually lived in Aurelia for a while. Uh, I worked in Cherokee. Belinda worked in uh, Storm Lake at the Vista University, and uh, uh, we just kind of ventured back. Okay, uh, we got to talk about the Shenandoah coaching and baseball job. 2006, yeah, you went to the state uh, tournament. Let's talk first of all. You know, 2003, you're taking over a high school baseball team for the first time. What uh, what avenues did you take? And, and I mean, did you really even know what you were doing? Did you have some help? What was going on? Uh, <laughs> I I didn't really know. I told the guys when I first started. I said, guys, this is all new to me. I mean, this is high school now. We're not playing uh, 11 and under baseball and. Um, you know, I think a lot of people were patient. That's, that's the whole key to the whole thing. Everybody was patient with me. They were patient with the players. Uh, the players at the time hadn't had a whole lot of success. I think the freshman team was basically the varsity team at that time. So I, I had those guys for, you know, a good three years before they graduated. And um, we, we went from a family aspect. We talked a lot about family and how we were going to work for each other and, and grow with each other. And the guys just started buying into things. And um, um, I think one of the hardest things that, for me at that time was to get the guys to believe that they, were, they could be good. And once we got past some of the hurdles of that, uh, all of a sudden the confidence level came up. And uh, uh, then they knew that it was time for them to step up and play. That's great. Uh, but even before that, before you took over the head coaching job, you know, Brandon and Ryan, Bray and Grieber, they, they were gone by 2003. So I guess they went to stay, what, 2001? 2000, 2000, 2001. 2000, they went twice, 2000 and 2001. So kids that you coached, uh, you saw them play the state tournament. What was that like for you? Uh, it's exciting, you know. I mean, uh, uh, you watch uh, those kids and the opportunity that they do and, and have that opportunity and know that you've been a big part of, hopefully that you've been a big part of that before they got to that point. And, uh, you know, a lot of good relationships along the way too that way. And it's just fun to watch that grow. And so, you know, that was part of my confidence a little bit too coming into the coaching world that I felt like, hey, I had, a, I had my hand in some of this before. So I think I can bring that back to the table. All right, so 2003, 2004, 2005, you, you said you know, the freshman team was basically the varsity team in 2003, so you got the same guys. What was the success uh, like those three years? I mean, was it uh, continuing improvement? 
continuing improvement. Um, my, fr my first year, I think we won four or five games. Uh, second year, we maybe won seven or eight games. And then uh, the third year, we set a school record. Uh, we won 21 games that year. And uh, uh, I don't think that record's been touched yet today. So that's kind of exciting, too. But um, uh, that group of kids, uh, once they got to their senior level, I mean, um, when we when we went to work, we went to work. And uh, there was play time, and there was fun time, and things like that. But there was also work time, and they knew the difference between that. So 2005, how did that season end? Um, 2005, to um, be honest with you, I can't remember, yeah. Derek. I mean, that's been a while back. Yeah. Um, I th think we bowed out of the tournaments. We maybe won our first round game. I think we played Corning that year, and then we won lost our second game to Clorinda. Um, and then, uh, you know, that was that was the end of that season. But uh, a decent season all, you know, pretty much through. But, um, you know, you could kind of tell the momentum was coming, but uh, the next year is when it really got to go. So sometimes the biggest uh, improvement from a year to year comes between. So 2005, you got a lot of guys you know are coming back. What, uh, what, what went on between the end of 2005, 2006, or were you just kind of wait until – you know, February or whatever rolled around to get get the balls out again. Oh, that's really kind of what we did. Um, February we started uh, throwing again, uh, got guys back in the gym, started pitching again, worked a lot on pitching, had several guys that could pitch. So, and I think that was one of the biggest keys to our success. You know, we we couldn't just go out and rely on one guy each night. We had three or four guys that I could go to, and and so it was nice to have that. Well, do you think you could uh, go around the the diamond there with that team and talk about to all you know all the starters uh, from that team? I mean, I'm sure it's one that you remember quite well. Well, I had uh, Brian Laughlin behind the plate. Pitched, he pitched them as well. Uh, Cameron Vance was at first base. Um, at shortstop, we had Ricky Barbosa. Um, a little golly. bit. Uh, Luke Burning was in the outfield for me. Uh, Cameron Vance also played some outfield. Joe Perkins played in the outfield some. Joe Perkins pitched quite a bit as well. He was one of our young players on the team at that time. Uh, Cody Wieson played on that team. Greg Max played on that team. Um, yeah, just a, just a lot of quality guys. What do you remember from, uh, obviously you remember going to state, but uh, th throughout the season, um, it was kind of, you know, sometimes good teams are just like, you're sitting there. You get towards the end of the year, and you're like, "Let's let's just get on with this. It's time to make this run." We had uh, senior night here in Clarinda, in Shenandoah. Uh, played Clarinda. Had a rain delay going on that night. Uh, Clarinda was a, a, a very good team at that time as well. They still are. Um, what I remember about that night was is that it went nine innings, mm -hmm. and uh, it was zero zero going into the top of the ninth. Clarinda scored a run, went up one nothing. Um, we got together in the dugout, and I think you could just see the look on everybody's face that we're not going to lose this ball game today. Uh, and we came out and, and beat Clarinda that night two to one. It's probably the first time that I've ever beat Clarinda as a coach, uh, which was a big, big lift. And I think a big lift for those kids too, because you know when you talk about season goals with those guys, they'd say, well, two things we want to do: we want to go up and play Red Oak and beat them, and we want to play Clarinda and beat them. And my big goal was is. Okay, want to beat those guys too, but let's go up and let's beat Harlan and let's beat Denison and Glenwood and all those other teams as well. And uh, we were able to do that. We had some success against Denison that year. We we took, went up there and won two. Uh, we played Glenwood. We beat them. Uh, we played Lewis Central. We beat them. So I mean, the guys were able to to get some games going. But that win against Clarinda that night was kind of at towards the end of the season, and uh, everybody I think felt really comfortable that that was uh, a good turning point for us. Going to the postseason, do you remember uh, kind of how that all transpired and uh, eventually leading up to you know a sub-state final and a, and a win there? Uh, what was really weird about it, uh, every, time, every coin flip we won all the way through. So that was kind of neat. That's unique, and uh, that was always a good feeling. Uh, we started out with Bedford. Uh, we played them at home, had good success against them. We went up to Corning, and we played Mount Air. Uh, that was a tough ball game. They had uh, Lance Brown pitching for them at that time, and uh, uh, they got off to a three to nothing lead. Our guys fought back. We won that game four three late in the game, and then uh, uh, an opportunity to play Logan Magnolia down here. That was a tough fought baseball game all the way through. And uh, um, in fact, they were mowing us down. They were three up, three down, three up, three down. Their pitcher was hot that night, and. Uh, we changed the pace of the ball game. We started laying bunts down. We started taking pitches. Uh, we started our, our base running uh, when we had that opportunity and, and uh, won that ball game 3-2. Great. Well, that was the sub-state final? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so so you go on to the state tournament. It's probably here in Shenandoah is like, oh yeah, you know, we go to state all the time here in baseball. So you know, third time in like five, six years or whatever it was. So, uh, but this was your first one. So for you personally, obviously it was uh, different. But what was the what was the town reaction like? Oh, uh, tremendous uh, reaction. In fact, we had a send off from the high school. Uh, we, you know, we went down through Main Street or Sheridan Avenue here on fire trucks. Uh, a lot of people turned out. Uh, one of the probably, you know, and I go to the state baseball tournament to do some of the broadcasts for it yet today. Uh, one of one of the best representations, I think, from Southwest Iowa uh, up at that up at Des Moines when we went up there. And it was a gorgeous night. Um, but I would say we had 1,500 people to 2,000 people there. I mean, it was just awesome to uh, see the crowd from Shenandoah. So this was in Des Moines. It was one of the first years, I assume. One of the first years there in Des Moines. Um, I guess, uh, so the game itself, tell me about uh, the opponent and then how that thing, how, how it went down. Uh, played North Polk. Um, they were a top-rated team. I think we were the seventh-rated team in the state that year. Came in, seeded seventh, so we played the number two seed. Uh, they got out on us early, two nothing in the baseball game. Got another run on us. They were up three nothing. Um, you know, guys fought back. Uh, we we got a wild pitch that scored Greg Max from third base, made the score you know three one, whatever it was at that time. Um, we got another run. I think the final was three two, if I remember right. But uh, late in the game, uh, we had bases loaded. Brian Laughlin came up. He hit a, a line drive foul ball uh, inches off the line at first base. As a coach, of course, it was fair in my opinion, but it uh, didn't go our way. Um, we had uh, the game at 3-2. We had um, uh, Luke Burning on third base, I remember, and uh, ground ball back to the pitcher. And I told you know Luke, anything contact-wise, we're going to try to score. Um, so as the pitcher makes the throw to f- uh, first base, I mean, Luke's on a break to home plate, and it was a bang-bang play at home plate, and he was called out. But... Uh, we had our chances, and um, you know, I think what was interesting or fun about that game was the guys didn't go up there thinking that it was just you know it's state tournament and hey we made it. Uh, they were up there with a purpose, and they they were ready to bring home some hardware. I was supposed to ask you about that play at the plate too, and uh, they somebody said they'd never seen you so mad. Uh, they've not been around me that long then. <laughs> uh, I was a little upset. I mean, it was bang, bang. And, of course, you know, I've got videotape to go back and look at it. And, and in my opinion, he was safe. But, uh, uh, you know, it, I felt like it cost us a run. It would have tied the ball game up. And, uh, you know, our guys, they really, really, really played well. Great. Uh, so, you know, you go to the state tournament, you get a couple more years coaching there. Uh, and I assume maybe ch- uh, family and children kind of got you out of that? Yeah, that was it. Uh, uh, my oldest daughter started playing softball at the high school level, and uh, I wanted to be a part of that. And and so I, I gave up baseball at that time so I could spend time and, and watch her play and grow. And, uh, uh, you know, as probably many coaches do, at least I did, I'd sit back and watch and think, gosh, I wish I was doing this, and gosh, I wish I could do that. And, uh, um, you know, I just kind of wanted to feel get a feel to get back into the game again somehow. And so I started doing uh, some 7th and 8th grade softball after that. And now you're the co-softball coach. Uh, uh, tell me about uh, that. I know we've, we've had one year of it. How did you feel things went this uh, past year? I, I felt like things went really well. Um, I mean, Kara was awesome to work with. Um, uh, we finished the season on an up note. We were 20-19 and 19 for the year. First time the girls had been over 500 for quite some time. Um, I looked at pretty much every category, you know, that we we, uh, have as far as pitching stats and hitting stats and base running stats, and everything was on a positive. So, um, you know, it was a good year for us. Uh, We had great leadership, Devin Wood, Jordan uh, Major, uh, two seniors that really stood out and helped us out there. And, uh, you know, we're going to miss those guys, but uh, we've got a lot of good kids coming back. Great. Now, that'll probably get going here very soon as well. Uh, one other aspect I want to talk about you, uh, about you, about what you do is uh, you mentioned the broadcasting that you do for the Iowa High School Sports Network. Um, tell me about that, getting into that and uh, uh, doing that. I mean, it's got to be a thrill every time you broadcast. Most most of the time, it's a, it's a state tournament level, so you see some great teams and games. Yeah, it's an awesome uh, venture for me. Um, I got an opportunity. Um, of course, I've had an opportunity. I worked at KMA, as you know, and um, uh, Chuck and Don and, and Lee Hughes have given me an opportunity of a lifetime to do things like that. Um, you know, I went to University of Iowa with a broadcasting major. 
um, communication studies major. And so I wanted to get into broadcasting somehow or do something like that uh, through the time. And those guys gave me that opportunity. So I'd follow Lee around on Friday night high school football games. And uh, when Lee left here, he went to the Iowa High School Sports Network started doing the broadcast on that level and for football he asked me to go along and be his color commentator and and keep stats and those types of things so that's kind of how I got my foot in the door and then when Lee left that uh, venue um, I talked to Ken Krogman and said uh, Ken I'd like an opportunity at it you know see if I could make this work and he gave me that opportunity and I've been doing it uh, for about five years now so it's it's tremendously a, a lot of fun as you mentioned you get to see Great football every every time uh, you know you go to the state level and a lot of good kids and of course a lot of the kids that you talk about you see some in the Big Ten you see some playing for Northwest Missouri State um, it, it's a lot of fun and I, I really do enjoy it and you also brought along the old KMA team member too because I know my first year here was uh, you and Kent Larson out doing games and now he's there with you as well yeah thank you <laughs> uh, yeah Kent has uh, joined me and uh, you know we work really well together I, uh, Kent's a great guy he's uh, he's got a good knowledge of the game behind him uh, he understands you know the, the broadcast world a little bit of when to and when not to and uh uh, has always got great things to offer, and he's just a great supporter. I want to talk one one final thing about Kent was I thought was uh, he's kind of an animal because that whole state volleyball, state football situation that was wild and crazy. I mean, he wasn't going to miss either one of those for the world if he didn't have to. Can you just speak to that a little bit? I can. Uh, uh, you know, I I talked to. Ken about um, Kent about that you know probably a couple three weeks in advance and I said uh, you know where are you at with this because I know you guys have a great chance of making it to state and he said oh I think I can do this and I think I can do that and uh, I said so what you're telling me is maybe I need to find somebody to help me out a little bit to help you out and uh, he said yeah maybe we should go down that path so fortunate enough he was able to get to the state volleyball run and uh, watch his daughter play and be a part of that and in between times, I mean, he was he was leaving Cedar Cedar Rapids to come to Cedar Falls and and uh, traveling back and forth a little bit, uh, but uh, he made it all work. And um, I don't know how much sleep he got. I don't think a whole lot, but uh, uh, he's just a great guy and, and it's really been a good help. Well, Alan, I think that's all I have here. Unless you have you know, anything else you want to add about all the, all, I mean, you do a lot of things. <laughs> I, I I'm pretty involved in and in doing a lot of things, and uh, you know, I just appreciate the opportunity you guys give me a chance to be a part of this today. But uh, um, yeah, it's it's fun run, and uh, can't wait to get back on the softball field this summer.